Now another really cool thing I can do with Google Groups is I can create my own groups. So because we have set up in Google every staff member and every student um, already in Google with their account names, um, I can create my own groups. So I can simply go to my Google Groups and I get my main group page. I can create a group. And in that group, I can give it a name. Uh, I can give my group an email address, which means somebody will actually send uh, me messages, can send me an email to this group, and it would automatically get posted without visiting it if we wanted to. So let's say I wanted to create a group called Tech Leadership Team. And again, this is the email address, and I can adjust that maybe. I don't want hyphens in there. I can take that out if I don't want. I can give my group a description, language, and I can choose what type of group this is. Now there's a few different types. An email list is kind of like just a contact list uh, like I would have in Google Contacts, or I might have just a mail list that I send one message and it goes to all these people. The really big advantage here with creating your own group is choosing either a web forum or Q&A forum. These are very similar to our uh, Holman folder or shop and swap. Um, so Holman is, for example, a web forum where you can post topics and other people can respond. Q&A is very similar, except it's a more of a question answer format where you would post a question and then people would respond to it. So it's a really new possibility that we haven't had before. So if I choose a web forum and it gives me a little description of what this is, and then I can control who can join this group and what they can do. So by default, all members in this group um, can view topics. All members in this group can post topics uh, but this is the one you want to pay attention to as far as who can join this group by default anyone in the organization can join the group without needing permission they can just go on it open it and join um, that is the way shop and swap was set up um, if you want to be in control of the group and who can join and who can't um, then I can choose to have them ask so this would require um, anyone in our organization uh, in Pattonville can ask for permission or if it's people outside of the organization uh, you can say anyone can ask but if I said anyone in the organization can ask then they can go to my group they can click on uh, the group and ask to join the group I will get a notification as the one who created the group and I will choose whether to approve or deny uh, their request. If I approve them, then it has created our own group that we can post messages in. So this works great if I wanted to do something for maybe a committee or um, any kind of a group where it's hard to get people together Then I wanted to have conversations. I could even do things in the classroom like book discussions with students, online book groups, book talks. Um, and some really cool um, interactive discussion uh, that's really, really easy, way easier than in the way discussions typically work in Moodle, um, and uh, really powerful. And that is how you can create your own groups.